From the moment Hahnemann published his Organon of Medicine in 1810, homeopathy's history has been filled with individuals taking homeopathy back to their homelands or to remote areas of the world, inspired by results they have witnessed or cured of conditions for which they could find no other relief. In the process, homeopathy has spread, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, but always steadily. Right here and right now, the same process continues. There are projects run by structured organisations, others organically put together by small groups of like-minded colleagues, still others created and sustained by a single driven individual determined to make a difference. Some projects are purely educational, some clinical training programmes, others include nutrition. All are integrated into the fabric of the society, working with local groups, local councils, local chieftains and government officials. All recognise the need to build a self-sustaining future. In the last two decades, a powerful new movement has answered the call of natural disasters and taken homeopathy to places like Africa to address the most pressing issues of our time. These homeopaths are the unsung heroes of our community, and this film is just a snapshot of a few of the incredible projects working hard out there in the field. Uche Ilicanum to my old cash, the tick me a tombe way Yucatam. Tak alimita tikbati tulaka with it castalillo behlao, itia tulaka castalillo. first come into these villages, it takes you way back in time. And you see how primitive people live and how very little people have. Bill and I have been going out to the Pueblos for several years prior to this. We discovered that not only was there no health care or medicine in these villages, that this situation had really existed for generations. Health care is one of the most critical issues facing every country in this world. And when you realize that you have not only 800,000 Maya living without health care in the Yucatan, you have millions of people across Mexico without health care as well. And that's how it all started. We did basic health care, that is we brought a doctor in medicine to a village. We started out with one doctor in Huhi. But then as soon as that happened, all the surrounding municipals, they all said, well, when are you coming? Eh, no es necesario más que un pequeño estímulo para poder desencadenar toda una reacción eh, de defensa del cuerpo. La primera ventaja que tenemos, tenemos aquí en Yucatán es, es sobre el método tradicional, pues es que es barato, pero no solo porque sea barato, sino también porque es, es efectivo. ¿no? So, slowly we started to develop this program, we said, well, it's not just good enough that a person comes to see a doctor, uh, education, was a very important or vital part. Out of this started to develop what we call the WHOHE model. The first is health care. The second is sanitation and hygiene education. Uh, the third is nutrition education. Con estos dos folletos podemos hacer mucho en, en cuanto a la educación de los niños. Porque uno habla de higiene y salud que es la base de nuestra alimentación, de nuestra higiene personal, que nos evita muchas enfermedades. Y bueno, el otro, que habla sobre el tratamiento ideal, en, en mi modo de ver, el modo ideal para tratarnos y curar nuestras enfermedades. 
creo que son eh, programas muy buenos porque debemos de recordar que para la salud no es solamente el medicamento, sino también depende de nuestra nutrición, de nuestra higiene. The goal to cover the entire Yucatan would be 15 doctors. And if a promise of health is going to succeed not only in Yucatan, but in all of rural Mexico, which is where we are, we're headed, uh, it's going to take young, passionate Mexican doctors who identify with the people, connect with the people, become part of the fabric of the people, and understand what this project is really about. We'll go anywhere where the people need us. The myopathy is being integrated into the public health system as a free service that is a, a, an optional service for the patients. Homeopaths are distributed all across the island. There is a, a very good regulation system for homeopathy just to control the quality of the, of the treatments and is uh, very well in, integrated into the, the whole system. Many courses introduced into the lecturing programs of medical doctors. So after graduation, they already know how to use homeopathy and at least basic knowledge. Uh, we also have veterinarians working on, the, on that field. There is many farmers that only use homeopathy to treat the animal. I think that uh, based in, in our own results, in our own experience, homeopathy uh, is uh, uh, almost the main practical solution for, for developing countries. The, the benefits of using uh, homeopathy are very high with very low risk, but in addition is a low cost medicine. Finland Institute is a center devoted to the development, research, production and commercialization of, of human vaccines. Finland Institute is a, is a center that is devoted to provide alternative for prevention of diseases by any means. We are integrating an omeprophylactic uh, approach. Integrating this approach into the vaccine program, so the prevention vaccine uh, system in Cuba that comprise vaccination, comprise vector control, education, and, and, and other things. Sometimes uh, to apply a conventional medicine takes a long time so we need to, to switch to any other alternative that are faster, quicker, and more effective. And this is why we are using omeprophylactic approach to cover this special epidemic situation. We have been treating uh, epidemics of hepatitis A, lactopirosis, conjunctivitis as well, dengue fever. The homeopathic products are very easy to produce, very easy, very low cost to, to, uh, for the population. So I think that uh, uh, this is the, the, the medicine of the people and, and then that, is, that could be the main alternative for developing countries, uh, especially those who are suffering from strong epidemics and those that have very low incomes. Homeopathy, or the water medicine, was introduced to the Solomon Islands in the 1920s by Dr. Northcote Deck, a medical missionary from Britain via Australia. For 19 years he sailed among the islands in his boat, the Evangel, as captain, engineer, photographer, explorer and doctor. He taught a group, the dispensers, to prescribe 36 homeopathic remedies by numbers. In the 1970s and 80s, Margaret Bartlett, another missionary, 
added another 15 remedies to their list. From those small beginnings, over 150 dispensers across six regions now treat an estimated 60,000 people a year for a wide range of accidents and emergencies as well as acute and chronic disease. Joy, Oniara's main dispenser for more than 25 years, sees up to 60 people a day. 80-year-old Beth Filoa, one of the oldest dispensers and Joy's teacher, still runs a Saturday acute clinic from her home. Belly Ron, or diarrhea, might need number 42, aconite, number 3, argentum nitricum, or number 5, arsenicum album. Belly Shot, or constipation, might need number 9, bryonia, number 10, calcarea carbonica, or number 16, chamomilla. The water medicine is being prescribed simply, accurately, and classically to great effect. Jane Lindsay and Robin Guzzi, homeopaths from Australia, are looking at the possibility of further training for the dispensers and renewing their supplies. In the summer of 1990, a handful of idealistic new graduates from the College of Homeopathy arrived at the Grasnabry site to provide an acute drop-in clinic for festival goers. This enterprise was very successful. They treated in excess of 350 people and gave them the confidence to approach Cambridge City Council and offer the same service at the annual folk festival at Cherry Hinton. It was there that the Travelling Homeopaths Collective was born. My name's Marcus Christo and we're here at the Llama Tree for the second year. We've been treating a number of complaints from sunstroke, headaches, the odd hangover and a lot of coughs and colds. And a lot of toothaches as well this year. Over the years, the Travelling Homeopaths Collective have contributed greatly to increasing the public's awareness of homeopathy and raising the profile of the profession as a whole. People have quite literally stumbled past the clinic and out of curiosity decided to give homeopathy a go. A number of people they've treated have been so astounded by the effectiveness that they have even decided to study it. It's amazing. She was she went in just clutching her ear and she within 30 seconds had taken the remedy virtually. She was fine. Her, her hand came down, she was laughing and absolutely fine from it. She came on uh, two days ago with a really severe toothache um, and had having had one tooth extracted, um, he was worried that he needed to go to Salisbury Hospital to have another one pulled out. And uh, we convinced him that homeopathy would be very useful and uh, we gave him a remedy called Staphys Agria, which is Staves Acre, which helped him a bit, and then we go, moved on to giving him some mercury, and uh, it's best for us to leave. What happened after taking the mercury? Well, after taking the mercury for the day, it eased off totally, and then by the morning, the following morning, there was no pain at all, so I'm really impressed. I'm really happy, because I've now I've had some sleep. <laughs> the Travelling Homeopaths Collective have a vision to take homeopathy to wherever it is needed most beyond the fields and into the high street. It will be powered and heated by renewable energy sources.
have got three Nepalese doctors and also we have um, European doctors coming here regularly every month. So she is ill for how many, how long? Before they thought uh, she has gastric problem, so she used to take medicine for gastric. So here we have got the remedies. This here is our library. The European doctors are getting more and more digitalized and uh, when they are coming over here, no, they are bringing their books. Capo animalis is also a wonderful remedy in different cancer types eh, for brain cancer, for bowel cancer, almost for any type of cancer. This here is our office, Marianga, working hard on the research. So here we have got the very special bed for the European doctors and when the carpenters were making this bed, I mean they were so surprised, they told that they have never made such a big bed in their lives. You, know? you can see this pond here. It's called Nakpohori Snake Pond. We still don't have the sufficient uh, health system yet. Hey, Ramjiwa! Hey, Ramjiwa! What I thought is if we can uh, promote homeopathy in Nepal, that I mean, I, I don't know any other medicine which is more ideal than the homeopathy because you know, in the homeopathy, if you take a box full of remedies, you know, you can go anywhere of Nepal and you can cure almost all the diseases. I'm doing a training to the allopathic students about homeopathy because I have teach them to anatomy, physiology, and medicines. I always introduce homeopathy to them, and those students they are willing to learn about homeopathy, what is homeopathy? Then I say homeopathy is a science and art. It is pure practical way. Then they visit to our clinic and we show how it works. Now the homeopathy is being popular in Kathmandu and Nepal. <laughs> Calcutta Mobile Homeopathic Clinic was the vision of British homeopaths Carol Boyce and Linda Shannon, who studied homeopathy there in 1986. After working in a slum clinic, they realized that without food, the homeopathic remedies could only do so much. So they started a children's nutritional project and raised the funds for a mobile unit, which still provides regular free homeopathic clinics to various parts of Calcutta and surrounding villages. Project coordinator Janet Robertson writes, It was pouring with rain today, but this was no deterrent to the barefooted slum dwellers who either queued for milk at the rear of the fan or at the side for homeopathic prescriptions. Patients with all kinds of problems came for treatment, and because it was the rainy season, acute diarrhea, tonsillitis, and asthma were common. Many of the chronic conditions presenting were due to wet weather aggravates, so there were plenty of patients with rheumatic symptoms. About 40 patients were seen in this session and about 30 children given nutrition.
collapsed on her yeah and she lost six family members yeah, yeah. and now she's in grief yeah After the earthquake, and almost everybody is out of his house because and the houses are collapsed, you know. So some some of the house of the houses are cracked, you know. So the houses are not safe, and it's the reason why you know the people don't want to take chance to live in their houses because they're not safe. I don't want I don't want to go inside the house because because I'm very afraid. Yeah. My heart being uh, so first uh -huh. when I sleep. Uh -huh. I lose one friend, one friend, my, yeah. my best friend. Ça le fait pour moi et pendant que je suis je me suis senti et tête montée, j'en calme. Et puis je me débaille, si blague à Zan, mais moi. Et puis les maps marchent tout, je me suis senti solide. Before, before I wake up, every, 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 every time at night. Now, yesterday night, I, I sleep all night long. I, I sleep all night long. Before when I wake up all the time at night, my heart beat. Oh. Uh, yes, I was very, very lost. I, I remember the junior is 12. I, I, I go to visit the person and they came. I give them jobs and after they back to me, they say, Jackson, you know, I have, I have no fear, I have no pain. I wanna tell about, not a kakusiki, 
So far we have uh, 32 students and uh, it began 2007 with the first lot of students which were 16. So we have uh, yearly recruitment that normally takes place in summer uh, uh, from uh, October and I work for a foundation that is uh, uh, directed by Dutch homeopath and uh, normally it um, assists orphan girls by providing them uh, homeopathic uh, courses and the, the major aim and goals of this institution is to empower uh, young Kenyan women uh, to become uh, independent in the future. Whereby the child experiences much constriction of the chest. Then on the abdomen, there is distension of the abdomen and the flatness which smells bad. So she's <laughs> I'm holding 26. I'm helping you. I'm 26. It talks about the, the, the therapeutic law of Q, which says that the weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished by you. The one which is similar and stronger to it, only differing from it in Before I joined the, uh, the institution, I was running mobile clinics across the country. I must have traveled almost uh, like uh, five provinces I, uh, out of uh, the seven that we have in our country and uh, the results were quite remarkable. That's what really triggered me to really love homeopathy. We have uh, uh, patients traveling like 500 kilometers away to come to our center because of one patient you treat gets well, refers another patient. So the potential is very high. It's, it has something to offer and even the Kenyans are going to benefit uh, not only in terms of the health care but also uh, employment opportunities. I mean, obviously, when you look at Ghana or, or any African country, there's more. The problems are more than just health problems. So obviously, we have a, a lack of clear leadership, a lack of selflessness in in the political arena or in the leadership arena, and then also a complete collapse of the traditional leadership and cultural system that used to support people. If you spend any time in Africa, you will realize that people have a spiritual uh, view of life, and, and homeopathy fits in nicely into that that, uh, you know, there's a, a form of medicine that is gentle, safe, effective, where certain principle, principles, if applied, will lead you to the um, medicine that pretty much any substance has a potential to be a medicine. All of those ideas fit in very well with the African traditional view of life. And I think that if we are able to um, regain our confidence in our traditional way of looking at the world, then homeopathy will be seen to fit in very well within that uh, uh, worldview. In terms of the um, potential of homeopathy, I think it is, it is good because one, it, it will allow the leaders, if they are, have the right agenda, to see that healthcare doesn't have to be expensive. Two, that uh, we don't have to rely on the idea of popping pills for the rest of our lives. And, and then thirdly, to see that you can do a lot of things for yourself. You don't have to rely on international ph pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies or people coming in from outside that there's a lot of things that can be done on a local level. This is the village called Togbeve. So we've come this morning to do an uh, outreach clinic here. We have already seen some of the patients we treated before and then uh, we are waiting for the regs. Yeah, this was one of the patients as well that came before. 
So when she carries her load on the head and she's walking, she feels like falling down. Her walking also is imbalanced sometimes, as if she will fall. She became pregnant during the second pregnancy. The pregnancy was in the eighth month. And one day she boarded a vehicle and saw that her feet were swollen. <coughs> and the doctor gave her frisamide, 24 tablets to be taken for four days. That is, if you take six tablets a day. And on the second day of taking the medication, the whole leg becomes shrinking. Okay. And the baby forcefully came out from her or from the vagina prematurely. When they heard the story, they asked the doctor why she gave the flozamide. And the doctor said she was just making a trial on her. <laughs> so all those things triggered her uh, uh, the conditions. She had a heat sensation from that time, had burn and high blood pressure with a tingling sensation and, uh, and so many other symptoms <coughs> till today. So the first time she came to me, that was in um, uh, June 2008, I gave her natmu, and now she said that his sensation is almost gone. Mm -hmm. And now Dr. Kalich Shanka said we should give uh, Sikeli 200 C, mm -hmm. one, two times a day, mm -hmm. and then wait and watch. Yes, Fuzamide is a diuretic. It is usually given to urinate so that the body fluid comes out. Half a tablet a day or one is more than sufficient. What is this? How long has this growth been there? Two years now that the mother said she got nothing. And uh, he's had frequent doses of malaria. Yeah? This, this is a four-month-old baby who's had diarrhea since one month old, yeah. green diarrhea with mucus. Mm -hmm. The mother was sick for two months after birth with malaria, didn't see a doctor, had no treatment. The baby didn't get enough breast milk uh, during these four months. So the baby is somewhat malnourished and is not gaining any weight. I would like to thank all the people who contributed financially, morally and towards my going to uh, India and even towards the project over here. I owe them a great gratitude and I, I hope I will not disappoint them. I will do my best to, to upgrade homeopathy in the area and then spread homeopathy throughout the whole Volta region and even Ghana. The Swaziland Homeopathy Project was started in June 2008 and in 2009 the project received funding which enabled it to make significant progress. The most notable achievement has been the employment of the services of a full-time homeopath resulting in an increase in the number of clinics and over 1,000 patients having received treatment. The project is currently able to carry out 19 clinics per month and 15 of these are mobile outreach clinics. Eleven are at locations for Tinsaba's Handcraft Project and four are at outreach locations for Gone Rural, a similar home-based handcraft project. Tinsaba was established 20 years ago as a fair trade business. It has grown steadily over the years and presently has a community-based handcraft development project which supports 900 local rural women. It must be stressed that only about 20 to 30 percent of the patients treated on this project are known to be tested HIV positive. Many people are untested and this reflects the overall situation in the country. 
Everyone seen by the homeopath is eligible for treatment regardless of their status. In addition, it should be noted that the Swaziland Homeopathy Project is not claiming to cure HIV. Tinsaba has a passion for excellence and developing the individual. The master weavers are able to increase the asking price on their baskets and these baskets were recognized to be within the top three in the world at the 2009 Santa Fe Folk Art Festival in the USA. There is a plan to carry out research to investigate the integration of homeopathy in the treatment of HIV AIDS with special emphasis on the alleviation of the toxic side effects of the antiretroviral therapies. Valley Charity is a national care point in Lobamba run by women volunteers from the surrounding community. They feed approximately 80 orphaned or vulnerable children on a daily basis and operate a preschool. Monthly homeopathic clinics began with this organization in 2009. The Pine Valley Clinic is a clinic held for the community living on the outskirts of Mbaban. The project also received very generous donations of repertorizing software and five sets of Murphy's homeopathic repertory and Materia Medica. Each case is continuously evaluated by the homeopaths. The other mobile clinics are run with Gone Rural, which employs approximately 770 women in the remote areas to plate high-quality homeware products from locally grown Lutinzi grass. Through their engagement with Gone Rural, the women not only earn a steady income, but also have access to training and a comprehensive HIV AIDS welfare program. Each woman employed supports an average of eight dependents. The Swaziland Homeopathy Project website was set up and a comprehensive database for statistical analysis of the patients has been established. The database is now fully operational and the majority of the patients have been recorded. Training of Swazi homeopaths to sustain the project needs to begin. I have a private practice and I'm also a secretary on the board of Abhalite Foundation and the founding member of the Kenya Society of Homeopaths. And with Abhalite we're also doing a lot of educational work. It's Kenya's homeo premier homeopathic training college. Um, they also train in natural medicine as well, so there's a naturopathic course. And we feel that's really important because it's wonderful to have all the volunteers that we do come out that help to do short training and work in the clinics. But at the end of the day, unless there's a grassroots level work going on where ordinary Kenyans are being trained as homeopaths, it's not sustainable. I think homeopathy provides a effective, accessible, alternative route in that means that every single Kenyan would have decent health care available to them. And it's something that can be disseminated very easily, I feel, on a grassroots level, whether it's in rural areas or in deprived urban areas, so that it's not just accessible to a certain section of the population. I see the health of every single Kenyan being radically changed. As in a lot of majority world countries, people pay for medical services on point of use. And so in that sense, there's a huge opportunity because you might as well pay to see a homeopath as you would to see an allopath. And people are voting with their feet at the end of the day. There's also a huge amount of self-prescribing that goes on. And the great thing about homeopathy is it's relatively easy to train people in first aid use. So instead of them taking you know, what can be quite relatively toxic drugs or things, or using them unsafely, they can use something that's cheap and safe that they've been trained in using to treat a lot of common ailments. Much looking at trying to um, develop malarial research around malaria prophylaxis. 
because whereas we've got wonderful effects um, in terms of treatment, I think it's important to do the prophylactic research because that's going to be the way forward, really, preventing people from getting the disease in the first place. There are three things that have really challenged the continent, and that has been school, hospitals, and churches, or mosques, religion. Prior to the colonial times, all of those belonged in the village and they belonged in the home. Post-colonially, you have hospitals that are miles away that nobody can reach. You have schools that people have to walk 20 kilometers to get to. And everything has been taken out of the center where it was. Homeopathy can reverse that trend and bring back into the heart of the village what always belonged there, which is access to health care that works. <laughs> Sansura le makaya, sakonde tebi. Sapira le tebi, satorum sabuya le makaya. Homeopaths Without Borders are a group of professional individuals from various walks of life. They meet regularly throughout the year to report on their various ongoing missions, to inform one another of emerging healthcare issues in the third world, and to learn about new homeopathic remedies and techniques of treatment. They are dedicated to bringing homeopathic health care to underdeveloped countries where regular health care doesn't reach the entire population, such as the remote northwest community of Bukombe, Bena, West Africa. We held two kinds of homeopathic courses in Bena in the national language of French, a first aid course for people with an advanced school education, so named the Socorists, and a course addressing more complicated health issues was given to midwives and nurses. Hunting with a homemade gun can lead to horrendous accidents with gunpowder, which can be treated effectively with homeopathy quickly promoting the appearance of new skin. The community of Bukombe invited us to teach homeopathy, so they take a great interest in the course, as seen by the regular presence of a deputy of the local health care system, the regional doctor, the first and second municipal administrators, and our host, the mayor himself. The courses are coordinated by an extremely experienced local midwife, Philomen Sansuomo. Philomen lectures at the University in Cotonou, has been a governor of a region of Bena and worked in the Beninoise Embassy in Belgium. As part of the more extensive course for the nurses and midwives, we visit their clinics to give on-the-job training. We see a variety of cases from gunpowder burns to crocodile attacks and to simple childhood fevers. We also treat patients when we're in Bukombe. Yaga Michelle's daughter, Elizabeth, had meningitis. She was so ill that by the time he got her to the hospital, she was little more than a body, and the nurse told him not to bring a dead body to hospital. Yaga Michelle gave her several fever remedies which restored her somewhat, but she was unable to speak, hear, see, or to walk. We prescribed Belladonna, and over the next five weeks, she got progressively better. Now, her father says, you wouldn't even know she'd been ill. Constant Bouquet of Nata Clinic tells us what an advantage homeopathy is for the local people, as it is so much cheaper than even the generic medicines available to them in the clinics. Antibiotics to treat bronchitis cost about 30 times more than homeopathy. The enthusiasm of the students, the dedication of the tutors and the appreciation of the patients all bodes well for the future. I know you wanna hear about what I wanna tell about. about. You wanna hear about huh? what I wanna, wanna tell about. Homoepathy, 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 homoepathy. Homoepathy.
And, uh, women we see here are all widows, all AIDS widows, because the husbands die earlier and for various reasons. Maybe they contracted the disease earlier, maybe they didn't go for treatment, uh, but they are on their own because the moment people know that uh, these women have AIDS, they will be severely stigmatized. Uh, the families will come and take away all their property and uh, everything they've got really and they left on their own. Well, they've got three or four children to feed and uh, they've got nobody to support them, no husband, no family. And the worst problem is the low energy. And low energy means they can't work and that means no food. So they're surviving on a meal a day, a meal every two days, sometimes less than that. And that's going to make the life and death difference to the family. So when they come back a week later and they're feeling much stronger and much better and they can go and work in the field, then they've got something to feed their family with. So you've, you've helped the whole family to survive. This area where we are, this is the Kilimanjaro area, is very um, rich in nutrition. The earth is fertile, anything grows here. You put a seed in the ground, two days later something pops up. And a lot of the people where their dwellings are, they actually have a lot of land, quite a bit of land around their houses. And all they grow there is corn. So all they get is carbohydrates and no nutri you know, nutrients. But with a little bit of education, which is what we are also introducing into this project, um, that can make a big, big difference. This uh, nutrition thing is a big problem also in terms of the antiretrovirals. They don't have the energy, they don't have the food, they don't have the, the nourishment needed to take these antiretrovirals. So a lot of women will put the antiretrovirals in their bag, but they won't give it to the children because they know if they haven't eaten and they take them, they could simply die. There are funerals are a regular part of life here. We often come to the clinic, nobody's there, they're at a funeral. People are dying like flies over here all the time. Good people, wonderful people. Homeopathy works fantastically. It's effective. It has no side effects. It costs near to nothing and people can learn it. And there's no other solution when the African governments have now reduced their budget for ARVs and everything else by 25 to 50 percent because of global recession, where there's no food to eat and they can't take that medicine. And the people here are voting with their feet. And the local authorities are voting with their feet and they're saying, yes, this works, this is worthwhile, this is what we want. And they all sing in the praises of homeopathy and saying, this is fantastic. Everybody's coming. Homo empathy, homo empathy,